very warm welcome to you to the second session on powder metallurgy at the onset i would i would like to wish you a very good morning so today we are going to start the second session on powder metallurgy in the previous session the, that was powder metallurgy 1 we discussed regarding the details of basic manufacturing after that we discussed the basics of powder metallurgy after powder powder metallurgy we saw that what is the basic concepts of powder metallurgy later on we moved on to the production of metal powders before that we discussed what are the different types of geometric characteristics of the metal powders so last session ended when we dis we were discussing regarding the powder metallurgy metal production techniques so we have discussed three different techniques of metal production that was the first one was atomization the second was one was reduction and the third one was carbonyls so today before we go on, on to the second session on powder metallurgy a brief review of what we have discussed till date we have discussed in our first session introduction to basic manufacturing then we have discussed introduction to powder metallurgy then we discussed importance of powder metallurgy as a manufacturing process after that we discussed what are the metal powders what are the different shapes of metal powders how these shapes influence the properties of the final product then we discuss the various characteristics like apparent density chemical properties purity later on we went on to discuss the production of metal powders in production of metal powders we have already discussed atomization reduction and carbonyls technique for making of metal powders so this was to be continued in powder metallurgy 2 so today we are here to start our discussion on powder metallurgy 2 so the fourth technique for making the metal powders is comminution so comminution basically known as mechanical pulverization this involves crushing milling in a ball mill or grinding brittle or less ductile metals into small particles brittle materials produce angular shaped particles while with ductile materials particles are flaky not particularly suitable for powder metallurgy applications this we have already seen when we discussed regarding the shape of the metal powder particles we have seen the needle like or flake like particles have the aspect ratio which is one of the characteristics to define the shape of a metal powder the ratio is aspect ratio for flake like particles is around 10 so when we use this flake like particles we it's very difficult to get adequate density and porosity in the powder metallurgy part so the particles that are flaky are not particularly suitable for powder metallurgy applications we will see this mechanical pulverization with the help of some diagrams so these are some of the diagrams of mechanical pulverization process here we can see that there are three different types of processes that come under the category of mechanical pulverization as we can see the first one is the roll crushing there are two rolls that are rotating and bigger matter particles are being crushed into smaller tiny particles second is the ball mill in ball mill we can see there are number of balls these balls can be made up of steel which is very very hard so these hard steel balls when they are rubbing against under the rotating action they wear they wear very less as the steel has the property that stainless type of steel is there or different types of alloy steels are there which have this property that they wear very less so when they rub against the metal particles they break the metal particles into smaller size particle the third category here to discuss is the hammer milling in hammer milling we can see there is a rotation taking place where there are two hammers so these two hammers when they strike against the metal particles these metal particles bigger metal particles are broken down into smaller metal particles so these are three different types of mechanical pulverization processes that are used to make metal powders then the fourth process is mechanical alloying already we have discussed in our first lecture that we the the basic property of powder metallurgy or the where powder metallurgy finds its most importance is that it has the tailor made raw materials you know tailor made raw materials mean that we can group different types of metal alloys or we can group different types of uh, pure metals make the powders and blend them together in the blending process so when we want to alloy two different pure metals together we can go for this process of mechanical alloying so what is the basic concept of mechanical alloying in mechanical alloying powders of two or more metals are mixed in a ball mill under the impact of hard balls already i have told in ball mill we make use of very hard balls which which may be made up of any kind of alloy steel 
the powders fracture and join together by diffusion forming alloy powders. So, these alloy powders why do we require these alloy powder powders because sometimes some, some particular powder metallurgy parts having some applications they require certain properties certain certain properties are desirable in the final product to have certain mechanical properties to have certain physical properties. So, when the final product has some specification regarding the mechanical and the physical properties we need to blend the different metals together to get the final properties. So, we need to go for the process of mechanical alloying. Now, coming on to the next process for making metal powders this is electrolysis. What is the basic principle? The basic principle anybody who has studied chemistry knows the basic principle of electrolysis. So, the basic principle here also remains same. This is a, another form of electroplating. Here, the basic principle is to pass high amperage through metal plates acting as anode and cathode in the presence of electrolyte. It means that the electrolyte is present and there are two electrodes, one acting as the anode, the other one acting as the cathode. The powdery deposit on the cathode is scrapped off and pulverized to produce powder of desired grain size. So, here we do not get the metal powder to be directly used, whatever is deposit, deposited on the cathode, we remove that and then we pulverize it. So, pulverization already we have seen there are three different processes for pulverization that is hammer milling, ball mill or roll crushing. So, we can use any of these three processes and finally, make a powder of the desired grain size. So, till now just to summarize the three different processes for metal powder produ production, we have seen that we can make metal powder either by mechanical pulverization or we can make it by electrolysis or we can make it by any of the processes that we have discussed in the first lecture. Now, there is another category of uh, powders that is nano powders. Usually, the powders that we make out of any of the manufacturing processes for powders, the size ranges from a few microns to maybe uh, going towards the maximum of 1 millimeter. But some, sometimes we make powders of nano size also. Nano size means 10 to the power minus 9 or smaller than that. Then these nano powders of copper, aluminum, iron, titanium and various other metals are pyrophoric. Pyrophoric means they ignite spontaneously or are readily contaminated when exposed to air. They are shipped as thick slurries under hexane gas. So, these nano powders although there is no limitation on the size of the powder that we make using any of the metal production techniques, but if we make powder of a very small size then these kind of problems of contamination or pyrophoric ignite spontaneously type of problems may come into picture. Now, these are certain shapes that are made by uh, using any of the manufacturing process for metal powders. Like the first one is the one dimensional, acicular type of shape is made by chemical decomposition. So, we can see that this is the acicular type made by chemical composition. Then there is irregular rod type which can be made, these are the irregular rod type of metal particles which can be made either by chemical decomposition or by mechanical comminution. Already we have seen mechanical comminution or mechanical pulverization. Then two dimensional type of particles can be made by mechanical combination, this is flake, these are different types of flake like particles, these can be made by mechanical combination or there are dendrite, dendritic type of particles, these can be made by electrolytic process. Now, dendrites if we see, if we study casting and we see the solidification phenomenon of casting process, then this dendrite formation takes place during the solidification of different metals. So, these are different kinds of dendrites that are formed in metal powder production also, these are some of the two dimensional shapes produced when we make use of electrolysis as one of the manufacturing process for making powders. Then there are three dimensional type of metal powder particles like this is spherical as we have seen in the scanning electron microscopy in the first lecture there was a photograph which was shown in which the spherical particles were made. So, these spherical type of particles can be made by the process of atomization or it can be made by the process of carbonyls precipitation from a liquid. Different processes are there, carbonyls, atomization or precipitation from a liquid in which we can get the spherical particles. Similarly, these rounded particles can be made, these are some, some kind of rounded particles. These rounded particles can be made either by atomization or these can be made by chemical decomposition. 
Similarly, angular shape of particle, these are angular shape of particle we can see, these can be made by mechanical disintegration or by carbonyls. Here we can see that irregular shaped particle where there is no regular shape of the particle, hey, these can be made by atomization or chemical decomposition. If we want to have porous type of particles, then porous particles can be made by reduction of oxides. So, we have seen that there are different processes for making metal powders like atomization, reduction, carbonyls, mechanical alloying and then there is mechanical pulverization, electrolysis. So, different types of processes can be used to make different types of metal powders of different shapes and sizes. So, these processes can be chosen according to the final shape of the particles that we want, so that these particles will influence finally, the density as well as the porosity of the final product that we make out of powder metallurgy. So, the selection of a metal production technique also influences the final properties that is the physical and the mechanical or the chemical properties of the final powder metallurgy part. Now, we have when once we have made these metal powders, then different metal powders have to be blended together to get the desired property of the final powder metallurgy part. So, now we come on to the blending of metal powders. So, we have already seen that powder metallurgy basically is making the metal powders, blending them, then compacting them, sintering and finally, the other optional processes. So, we have till now seen that how to make a metal powders, what shapes can be made using different metal powder techniques, metal powder production techniques. So, now we come on to the second stage of powder metallurgy that is called blending. So, now in blending of metal powders, Powders made by various processes have different sizes and shapes. As we have already seen in the previous slide that the, we can make different sizes and different shapes particles using the various processes. They must be mixed to, uh, they must be mixed to obtain the uniformity. So, we need to have some, some kind of uniformity in the powder mix. So, we need to blend the different sizes and different shapes of particles together to have the uniformity in the final mixture that we are going to use for further processing. The second point to mention here in blending metal powders is powders of different metals and other materials can be mixed to impart special physical and mechanical properties and characteristics to the powder metallurgy part. So, one thing to mention here where we use this P slash M, it says that it is a powder metallurgy, it is a small form of writing powder metallurgy. So, second point states that if we have to blend that, if we need to have certain important properties in our final product, then we need to blend different types of metal powders together. So, powders of different metals and different and other materials used to impart special properties to the final product, that is why we need to blend different particles together, different particles of different metals together. Then coming on to the third point for blending, third important point for blending is lubricants can be mixed with powders to improve their flow characteristics. The results are reduced friction between the metal particles, improved flow of the metal powders into the dye and the longer dye life with less wear. So, here there are three important points. Why do we need to add lubricants while the blending process into the metal powders? So, the first point is the results are reduced friction between the metal particles. So, if a lubricant is present in between the metal particles, so the flow of the metal particles will be very smooth within the dye. As we have already seen in the characteristics of metal powder that flowability of metal powder particles is one of the most important characteristics. So, the flowability will be improved if we use the lubricants. So, first point the results are reduced friction between metal particles. So, this will add into the property of flowability. The second is improved flow of metal powder into the dyes that is already I have uh, told that the friction will be less between the metal particles and the flowability will be good and the longer dye life with less wear. So, when lubricants will be there, these metal particles sometimes tend to be abrasive in nature. So, when these abrasive particles will rub against the dye wall, there are chances that the dye wall will have certain amount of wear. So, if we add lubricant into the dye, into the metal powder at the very onset only during the blending stage, then the friction between the dye surface as well as between the metal particles will be reduced and this will add to the longer dye life with lesser wear to the dye surface. The next point is powder mixing must be carried out under controlled condition 
to avoid deterioration or contamination. Already we have seen certain metal powders have the property that they are pyrophoric, they ignite spontaneously. So, in order to avoid any form of contamination or deterioration, the powder mixing must be carried out under controlled condition. Maybe these can be carried out under inert conditions where there is no atmospheric oxygen etcetera available. So, coming on to another point uh, important points of blending, deterioration is caused by excessive mixing which may alter the shape of the particles and work harden them and making the subsequent compaction difficult. So, work hardening may take place of the metal powders because of the uh, rubbing which is more as, as desirable. So, deterioration is caused by excessive mixing which may alter the shape of the particles. So, shape of the particles may also be altered. Now, while designing a powder metallurgy part, we feel that this is the shape of the particles we should use so that we get the desired property of the final product. We select a manufacturing process for a powder depending upon the shape that we require, shape of the particles that we require in the final product. But during the blending, if we go for excessive mixing, the shape of the particle will change. And if the shape of the particle will change, then the final properties that are desired in the final powder metallurgy part or the powder metallurgy product will not be there. So, deterioration is caused by excessive mixing, which should be avoided. The next point to be considered in blending stage is that powders can be mixed in air in inert atmosphere to avoid oxidation or in liquids which act as lubricants and make the mix more uniform. So, the mixing of the powders can take place in air, it can take place in inert atmosphere or it can take place in liquids. So, already we in the blending uh, section only we have discussed that we need to add certain lubricants to improve the dye life as well as to improve the flowability characteristics of metal powder. So, these can be mixed in the presence of a lubricant which can later on in the presence of a liquid which can later on act as a lubricant during the compaction and the sintering process. So, now already to summarize we have seen that why blending is required and what are the important points to be taken care of while we blend the different metal powders together. Now, we come, come on to the hazards with the metal powder. So, metal powders already told that it is they ignite spontaneously sometimes. So, these are some of the hazards which have to be avoided. So, what are the points to be taken care of while we discuss the hazards of the metal powder? The first point to be considered here is that the surface area to volume ratio for metal powders is, uh, makes them very explosive. The high surface area to volume ratio that is the surface area is more and the volume is less. This results into uh, sometimes explosion and sometimes some kind of deterioration of the metal powder. So, this has to be avoided. So, some of the metals which are which have these kind of characteristics are aluminum, magnesium, titanium, zirconium and thorium. So, these particular metals are particularly explosive because of the high surface area to volume ratio. So, great care must be exercised both during blending and in storage and handling. So, it is not that we make a metal powder of a very metal particles of very small size and then we use those metal particles as it is. We have to store them very carefully and we have to handle them particularly uh, having a lot of uh, giving lot of emphasis on their pyrophoric characteristics. So, they should not explode and cause certain damage to the human life or to the equipment. So, precautions what we need to take precautions include preventing sparks there should be no sparks wherever we are storing or we are handling our metal powders no sparks should be allowed in that area then open flames etc should not be allowed and chemical reactions should not be allowed so we have seen that metal powders once they are made they are having certain advantages but the limitation is that there are certain hazards also associated with the metal powders which have to be avoided now we come on to the powder metallurgy process. So, already till now we have seen that we can make metal powders using different processes and there are certain hazards related to the metal powders. Before that we have seen that metal powders of different metals need to be blended together to give the final mechanical as well as the physical properties to the powder metallurgy part. The powder metallurgy process and overview. The powder metallurgy process normally consists of four basic steps. 
So, four basic steps already in the first lecture we have seen. Just to point out once again, these four basic steps for powder metallurgy process are producing a fine metallic powder, mixing and preparing the powder for use, pressing the powder into desired shape, heating that is sintering the shape at an elevated temperature. So, till now we have seen that how to produce a fine metallic powder, some of the processes we have discussed with the help of certain diagrams we have seen how metal powders can be made. Mixing and preparing the powder for use already it has been discussed why blending is required, what are the important points to be taken care of while blending a metal powder. The third point is pressing the powder into desired shape, this is also called compaction which will be seen now. Another point in the process or the design cycle or the production cycle of a powder metallurgy part are heating and sintering the shape at an elevated temperature. So, with these two important points we are going to discuss in detail in the coming session. Now, other processes are required for special results. Other processes already in the diagram we have shown and we have seen that other processes are like infil infiltration, impregnation, machining, coining, sizing. So, all those processes will be discussed in the present session. Now, this is the very we can say a very detailed diagram of the process of powder metallurgy. So, we can see with the help of the arrows just first of all I will uh, talk about the important steps in the process of powder metallurgy and then we will discuss each step as we go into the further session. So, the first point is metal powders. Second point the metal powders once we have made the metal powders then we blend the metal powders together. In the blending we add certain additives, these additives can be lubricants. After the blending has been completed there are two ways we can make a final product. Either we can go for cold, cold compaction process or we can go for hot compaction process. After cold compaction we go for sintering and after hot compaction directly we go for secondary operations. So, basically the important steps included here are metal powders, blending, cold compaction, hot compaction, sintering and the secondary operations. Now, coming on to the further sub classification, metal powders can be made using atomization, reduction, electrolytic deposition, carbonyls, comminution and mechanical alloying. All these processes we have already discussed. When we make the metal powders, then we blend them together, add lubricants, why they are required already we have seen. Now, cold compaction can be done using simple pressing, isostatic pressing, rolling, extrusion, injection molding. Hot compaction can be done using isostatic pressing. Then we sinter the cold compact, uh, cold compaction product that we call as green compact. So, green compact that is made after cold compaction is then sintered and then finally, we go to the secondary operations. So, what are the secondary operations? Secondary operations basically are coining, forging, machining, heat treating, impregnation, infiltration and plating. So, if required we would go for the secondary operation. If the product does not demand all these processes then we can even omit these secondary operations. This depends upon the specifications of the powder metallurgy product that we are making. If required, we will go for these processes. If not required, we can omit these processes from the production cycle. Now, this gives a line diagram of the basic processing steps. So, we can see that this is the blending of the powders. So, this is one shape, Y shape kind of a fun, uh, equipment in which we put the different metals whose powder have to be made, sorry the powders have already been made, we put them for blending process here. So, different powders will be put here and this will be rotated as is shown in the diagram, this is the rotation taking place. So, this will be rotated at a predefined speed and the metal powders that have been put here will be mixed thoroughly. So, once we make the metal metal powder mixture here, the powder mix I can say. Once the powder mix is ready, this powder mix then will be put in the compaction die. So, this is the compaction die, in this we have a core rod here. 
if we want to make a hollow product which is hollow from inside we will use a core rod if we want to make a solid product then this core rod will not be required so this step means filling of the compaction die the first step was blending of the powders so different powders will be put and will be blended here with the lubricants if we want to add the lubricants after that we will use this compaction die in the compaction die we will put the metal powders in the form of the mixture that we have made in the blending stage after that the compaction is taking place this arrows show that the pressure is being applied this the solid black portion here shows us the product that is being made so the powder that has been put here has filled these cavities the die cavities and then there is a pressure being applied so this is the process of compaction after compaction the part ejection part ejection means the part that has been made is taken out now we can see this solid black portion which is this is the final shape this is the two dimensional uh, diagram shown this is a three dimensional green compact which has been made so now this green compact that has been made after the cold compaction process is then sent for the sintering process so the green compacts are sent here and here we can see there is a continuous type of arrangement belt type of arrangement the continuous belt is moving like this and the green compacts are put here on the belt so when these green compacts come on the belt they are first preheated up to a certain temperature after preheating they are sintered that is the sintering temperature which is less than the melting point of the molten uh, sorry the mel melting point of the metals that we have taken in the powdered form so if it is equal to or more than the melting point there are chances that the powders we have taken may melt so the temperature is always Uh, kept less than the melting point of the uh, molten uh, melting point of the metals that have been used for making the powders so the sintering is taking place here at a spe pre specified temperature which is which is less than the temp melting point of the metals that are used for making the powder metallurgy part then the cooling process is taking place and finally we get the finished part so this finished part if required this can go for any of the subsequent operations like coining and sizing it can go for machining it can go for infiltration impregnation so if required other optional manufacturing processes can be carried out on this finished part so what is basically compaction now we will discuss compaction and sintering so what is compaction so compaction is the process in which the blended powders are pressed into shaped shapes in dies so basically we apply some pressure we put the metal powder into the die cavity and then we apply some pressure so when the pressure is applied the powder takes the form of the die cavity so whatever product we want to make we will make exact replica of that product into the die, die cavity and the die cavity will be filled with the metal powder and then it is pressed so the process of this pressing is called as compaction so the purpose of compaction what is the purpose of compaction the purpose of compaction are the purposes of compaction are to obtain the required shape as i have already told that it will take the powder will take the shape of the die density and particle to particle contact and to make the part sufficiently strong for further processing so during the process of compaction we get the required shape we get the required density and we get the particle to particle contact so that the particle the sorry the product that we are making is of sufficiently strong strength or the strength of the particle not of the particle the strength of the product is sufficient to go for further processing steps now whatever product we are making the green compact is the product of the compaction process so that green compact has to be used for further processing already we have seen the compaction process after the compaction process whatever green compact we are getting that green compact is sent to the sintering process after the sintering process other optional processes may be required sometimes we may need to machine the product so when machining is there if the strength of the product will not be sufficiently high it may if it is brittle or if it is porous then it may break also so we need to have that the strength of the green compact should be sufficient to under to withstand the forces or to withstand the pr processes that are subsequent to the process of compaction so the purpose of compaction basically is to get the required shape that is the shape of the die then the required density and particle par particle to particle contact so as we have seen that the strength 
of the green compact is also important for further processing of the green compact. So, now the third point to be considered in compaction is an increase in the compaction pressure increases the density of the pressed powder or the green compact. So, if we increase the compaction pressure the density or the pressed product or green compact will improve. So, increasing the compaction pressure will increase the density of the pressed powder or of the green compact. So, we need to have adequate density of the green compact. So, density as well as porosity these are the two important properties of the powder metallurgy part. So, increasing the compaction pressure will increase the density of the powdered compact. Then the size distribution of the particle also affects the density of the compact. Already I have told this has been discussed in the previous class also if we put the tennis balls of same size into a box then there will be some porosity inside and the density will be depending upon the shape of the balls as well as the pores that are present in the box after filling the balls. So, the size distribution of the particles also affects the density. So, if we all the balls are of same size the density will be comparatively less, but if the there is a distribution of the size of the particles then the larger particles will take certain space and the smaller particles will fit into the interstices or the voids that have been created in between the bigger particles. So, they will fit into the smaller voids and the density will be improved. So, the size distribution of the particles also affect the density of the compact. So, now this is a very basic diagram just to show the what are the typical set of powder metallurgy tools. This is a very primitive type of diagram very simple diagram to explain the students what are the various type of basic powder metallurgy tools. So, you can see here there is a upper punch shown here this is the upper punch there is a lower punch the diff, it is of different color you can see then there is a die the three dimensional shape as well as the two dimensional representation is also shown the three dimensional shape you can say of the upper upper punch is like this this is circular shape then the die is also circular then there is a lower punch like this and then there is a core rod which is shown here so solid black portion gives the powder metallurgy part so all these parts typical set of powder metallurgy tools when they will be used in conjunction then we will be able to make a part that is this solid black portion this kind of part can be made use of using this typical set of powder metallurgy tool. How it will be done what are the various steps involved that we will see in the subsequent slide. So, here we can see this is a delivery of the metal powder. So, this metal powder will be delivered here. So, this metal powder in the first step is the delivery of the metal powder upper punch and lower punch are in a withdrawn position. Then when the metal powder has been supplied here these two punches will exert certain pressure and this is the process of compaction where we are applying pressure on the metal powder to give it the shape of the die. So, the die is there within the die there is a shape there is a core rod the core rod is being used because we want to make a hollow product. If we want to make a solid product in which we do not need any kind of cavity or any kind of hole then this core rod will not be required. Then this is the third process the third step sorry which is the ejection. In ejection this is at a withdrawn position upper portion of the upper punch and then the lower punch will push the part up. So, this is the part which is later on removed like this. So, this is this is a cyclic process first of all it is the metal powder is delivered here after the metal powder delivery it is compacted it is ejected and then it is moved to the next chamber. Next process and the delivery is again there for the metal powder. So, basically metal powder is delivered here and here and before the in between there are these two steps of compaction and ejection. So, this is the powder metallurgy compaction cycle. So, whatever we have seen in this diagram we will just summarize it in the form of simple English sentences. So, we can see powder metallurgy compaction cycle. The first point is with the upper punch in the withdrawn position the empty die cavity is filled with the metal powder. So, upper punch in the withdrawn position the die cavity is filled with the metal powder. The metal powder in the die is pressed by the simultaneous movement of upper and lower punches. So, this is simultaneous movement of upper and lower punch and the metal powder is being compacted inside the die. 
now when the metal powder has been compacted inside the die that is the step 2 then we go on to the step 3. So, what is basically step 3? The upper punch is withdrawn and the green compact is ejected from the die by the lower punch. Now, step 3 we can see the upper punch is withdrawn and the green compact this black portion or the product that we are making is withdrawn with the help of the lower punch. The green compact is pushed out of the pressing area so that the next operating cycle can start. So, now whatever green compact we have made here after the pressing as well as after the ejection is pushed into the next, next station or the next stage so that we are ready for the next process or the next cycle. So, as we have seen this is for the delivery of powder mix here. The again we will supply the powder mix here and this powder mix or the blended powder then will be compacted and after compaction it will be ejected. So, this is the basic powder metallurgy compaction cycle. So, this compaction cycle is almost the same for all powder metallurgy part. There may be some variation depending upon the change in the shape of the die depending upon the way in which we press the powdered mix to make a green compact, but the basic process for making a powder metallurgy green compact or a final powder metallurgy product will be same. This compaction cycle the basic steps will be same. Now, this is another diagram to explain how we can make a powder metallurgy part. So, here also there are 1, 2 and 3, 3 stages. As we can see in the first stage there is a die, this is the die, this light grey portion. Then there is the punch that is here this is the feed stock or the feed shoe from here we are going to feed the metal powder. So, this is basically the metal powder of which we want to make the final product. The shape that we are going to get will depend upon the shape of the die. So, here we can see that there is a cylindrical type of shape that we want to make. So, the die is of a cylindrical shape. Here there is a lower punch, this is a lower punch and this is a feed shoe. So, the feed shoe is going to supply the metal powder. So, once the metal powder has been supplied in the first stage, then we go on to the second stage. In second stage, we can see there is a lower punch, there is a upper punch, there is a die and then these two are as we can see with the help of arrows, these two are pressing the metal powder which has been supplied here into the green compact. After the pressing has been done, there is a process of ejection. In ejection, the lower upper punch has been withdrawn. The lower punch then pushes the green compact outside. Here it is written compact. So, this is the green compact that has been made. So, basically to summarize, there are three stages of forming. First one is the filling, the filling of the metal powder. The second one is the pressing, the pressing of the metal powder or the powder mix between the upper and the lower punches. And the third one is the ejection in which the green compact is finally ejected out of the dies. So, this is another uh, diagram which seems to be very complicated, but it is not that complicated. This also shows the very basic process of making a green compact. So, this is the shape suppose we want to make, we make a die, we put the metal powder, this is the loose metal powder which has later on been smoothened like this, there is a upper punch, there is a lower punch and then the upper and lower punch will press against each other and in between this black portion is the metal powder which has been pressed together and later on this black portion has been ejected. So, three diagrams have been shown to illustrate the process of compaction, there is a lower punch, upper punch, feed of the metal powder or the powder mix and then this powder mix is then formed into a form of a green compact which is later on ejected with the help of a lower punch. So, there may be sometimes problem in cold compaction. What are these problems? We will here discuss only one basic problem. The basic problem arises here. This is the powder mix which is being pressed. This is the punch which is pressing it. This is the die walls or we can say this is the die. So, we can see that this particular portion, upper portion has more density as compared to the lower portion. We can see the darker portion, we can assume that the darker portion here will have more density as compared to the 
lower portion because we are applying the pressure from this side only. So, the density variation is there. So, when we will use this product, some portion will have more density as compared to the other portion. In some of the applications, this density variation or the density gradient within the product may not be required. So, when this density gradient is not required, we need to have uniform density throughout the product throughout the bulk of the product, then this problem has to be avoided somehow. So, how it will be avoided? We can have two counteracting punches like this and here we can see that there are two dark portions on the top as well as towards the bottom also and there is a floating type of a die. Two counteracting punches and a floating type of die here we can see there are spring type of arrangement. So, this, this problem that arises because of the single acting punch can be avoided by using double acting or counteracting punches with the movable die. So, whatever we have seen here, we will simply see it in the form of a very simple English text. So, the problem in cold compaction already discussed in the previous slide. The effectiveness of pressing with a single acting punch is limited, wall friction opposes compaction. So, the wall friction will also oppose the compaction process. Then the pressure tapers off rapidly and density diminishes away from the punch. As already I have shown, the density is very good towards the uh, periphery of the punch or very close to the punch, the density is very good, but at a distance the density is comparatively less. So, floating container and two counter acting punches help alleviate this problem. So, the floating container and two counter acting punches, this is the floating container and these are two counter acting punches, these will help to solve this problem the problem of cold compaction. Now, there is another way in which we can counteract these problems, these are by isostatic pressing. So, isostatic pressing can also be carried out either in cold conditions or it can be carried out in hot conditions. So, what is basically cold isostatic pressing? This we will also see with the help of a diagram, what is cold isostatic pressing, press, uh, sorry cold isostatic pressing which is also called CIP. So, what is CIP? The metal powder is placed in a flexible rubber mold. The assembly is then pressurized hydrostatically in a chamber, usually by water. The pressure range is from 400 to 1000 mega Pascal. Normally, we have seen in compaction there is a die punch type of arrangement. The upper punch and the lower punch press the metal powder and a green compact is made, but it has certain limitations which are overcome by the isostatic pressing. So, what is the basic principle of isostatic pressing? The metal powder is placed in a flexible rubber mold, the assembly is then pressed hydrostatically usually by water. The pressure range typical is given as 400 to 1000 mega Pascal. Now, coming on to hot isostatic pressing what is hot isostatic pressing? Already we have seen cold isostatic pressing. Isostatic pressing means that we are pressing the compact from all the sides. In hot isostatic pressing or HIP, in HIP process the pressuri pressurizing medium is an inert gas or a glass like fluid. The common conditions for HIP are 100 mega Pascal at 1100 degree centigrade, although there is a trend towards higher pressures and temperature. As we have seen in cold isostatic pressing, we are pressurizing with hydrostatically in a chamber usually by water. In hot isostatic pressing, we are pressurizing with the help of an inert gas or a glass like fluid. The common conditions for hot isostatic pressing are 100 mega Pascal at 1100 degree centigrade. So, the major advantage of hot isostatic pressing is its ability to produce compacts having almost 100 percent density good metallurgical bonding and good mechanical properties. So, although we can use make use of process of die and punch type of arrangement, but still isostatic pressing has its own advantages. The advantages in terms of good density that is that can go up to the tune of 100 percent, then it has good metallurgical bonding of the particles and good mechanical properties. Now, this is a simple diagram of cold isostatic pressing as applied to forming a tube. So, if we want to form a tube using the process of powder metallurgy, then pressing can be done 
in cold isostatic pressing conditions using this kind of a diagram or this kind of a setup. So, we can see there is a this hatched portion is a solid core. Solid core, why solid core is required? Solid core is required because as already it is shown here as applied to forming a tube. This process is being applied for forming a tube. So, tube is hollow from inside. So, in order to have that hollow portion inside, we are using a solid core. Then there is a powder which has to be pressed. After uh, around it, there is a flexible wall, there is a stopper and a fluid. So, when with the help of a plug, when this is pushed down, the water or the fluid that is there will press against this flexible wall and the powder which is there inside will be pressed from all the directions. In with die and punch type of arrangement, sometimes there is a variation in the density profile along the length or the depth of the product. But in this case, as we can see, the pressure is being applied from all the directions. So, we will get a uniform density throughout the bulk of the product. So, density may go up to 100 percent of the final product. So, this is the basic diagram of cold isostatic pressing for forming a tube. Now, this is a simple diagram for hot isostatic pressing. In hot isostatic pressing, we have heating coils also because the compact is heated up to a uh, up to a temperature of 1100 degree centigrade as well as a pressure is applied. So, the pressure here is applied in the form of a inert gas or gas like uh, fluid. The pressure is applied with the help of a inert gas here and there are heating coils. So, there are different steps. First step is the filling the can, the can is filled with the metal powder or the powder mix, then there is a vacuum back bake out, then heating coils are used to heat as well as the pressure is applied from all the direction. The pressure and temperature profiles with time are shown here. So, the first the pressure is increased, then it is maintained at a certain level and then finally, it is released. Similarly, the temperature profile also, the temperature is increased, maintained at a certain pre-specified level and then this is decreased. So, then we get the final product in this form. So, this is the final this is the initial product where the metal has been pour, uh, the metal has been put or the powder mix has been put here the blended powder is put here vacuum back out and then it is pressed in the presence of temperature and then finally we get the final product so isostatic pressing as discussing cold isostatic pressing and hot isostatic pressing uh, we have discussed certain advantages of the process of isostatic pressing. But now, just to summarize these advantages, we can say that isostatic pressing has certain advantages and certain limitations. So, what are the advantages? The advantages are because of the uniformity of pressure from all the directions, as we have seen in the diagrams for HIP and CIP. There is a uniformity of pressure from all the directions and the absence of die wall friction, as we have seen in com, com, uh, going for the compaction process with die and punch type of arrangement, there is a friction between the powder as well as the die surface. So, here in case of isostatic pressing, the absence of die wall friction is there. So, this produces fully dense compacts of practical uniform grain structure and density. So, hence isotropic property. So, the density gradient is not there in the bulk of the product and we get a isot quasi isotropic type of properties. Secondly, it is capable of handling much larger parts than other compacting processes. So, the size of the part is also important. So, here we can handle much larger parts as compared to the other compaction processes. Then the limitations of isostatic pressing are wider dimensional tolerances as compared to other processes. So, the dimensional tolerances that we get in isostatic, process, uh, isostatic pressing are towards the higher side the as compared to the other compaction processes and greater cost and time than are required by other processes. So, the cost required here is higher and the time also is more. So, the lead time for making a powder metallurgy product will be more if we are opting for hot isostatic processing or cold isostatic processing. Then the applic applicability to only small production times as the time required for HIP and CIP is much more as compared to the other compaction processes. So, the final production volume that we can get is comparatively less. So, there are certain advantages uniformity in density and uniformity in pressure and then uh, die wall friction is also reduced 
but there are certain limitations also which are the high uh, the more time is required higher cost as well as the wider dimensional tolerances. So, if we want to go for hot isostatic or cold isostatic processing, we have to make a trade off between the advantages as well as with uh, the limitations. We have to see whether the advantages are more or the limitations are more and then we have to make a final decision whether we have to go for hot isostatic pressing or cold isostatic pressing or we have to go for general compaction processes like die and punch type of an arrangement. Now, dye and dye materials as most of the times I am been mentioning regarding the dye, the dye is used, the dye surface has a should have anti wear properties. So, what are the different types of materials that are used for making dyes we will see in this section. So, dye and dye materials. So, powder metallurgy involves high pressures already we have seen the compact has to be pressed. There is a considerable wear on the dye walls powder particles tend to be somewhat ab abrasive. So, powder particles that are we are that we are using sometimes they have flake like shape, sometimes they have irregular shapes. So, they sometimes tend to be abrasive in nature. So, these abrasive metal particles sometimes may abrade the dye surface. So, the that has to be avoided. The dyes are made up, up of hardened tool steel. So, tool steels are used to make the dyes because of their anti wear characteristics. For abrasive powders and high volume work, cemented carbide dyes are employed. So, already in the previous slide we have seen tool steels can be used. Last point, the dyes are made up of the dyes are made up of hardened tool steel. So, we can make dyes of hardened tool steel also and for abrasive powders and high volume production, we can go for cemented carbide dyes. The dyes must be very heavy in order to withstand the high pressing pressures which adds materially to the die cost. So, die cost is considerably high because the size of the die should be big moreover the material of the die should be ha should have the anti wear characteristics. So, these two important points lead to the lead towards the high cost of the die, but the high cost of the die can be spread over a large number of parts that we are producing over a period of time. So, if we the die is costly initially, but if it is used for making a large number of parts, then the total cost of the die is spread over the cost of making all those parts. So, today we come to the end of the second session on powder metallurgy that is powder metallurgy 2. To briefly summarize what we have discussed today, we started with our discussion on production of metal powders. We have seen today two processes for making metal powders. The first one was mechanical pulverization, the second one was electrolysis. Then we started our discussion on the basic process of powder metallurgy going step by step by step. We have seen that metal powders are made, blended, then compacted, sintered and finally, other optional processes are used. So, today we started our discussion on compaction, we have seen die punch type of arrangements can be used for compacting the metal powders and there can be isostatic pressing. In isostatic pressi pressing, we saw that we can go for either hot isostatic processing or cold isostatic processing. The advantages and limitations of both hot as well as cold isostatic press pressing were discussed briefly. Then we went on to discuss that the importance of the die materials the importance of dye material as well as the anti wear characteristics and the cost of the dyes was discussed briefly. Next lecture we will discuss regarding the sintering aspects of the powder metallurgy process and the design and economic aspects of the powder metallurgy parts. Thank you. Thank you.